Like I said in my previous review, only more could do what Moore's Bond does, and going into space, well, that just seemed kind of inevitable, didn't it? Much has been said about Eon's obvious attempt to cash in on the runaway success of Star Crash, and how Bond in space just seemed like a step too far, but you know what? I'm gonna fight for it, because you don't do a movie that involves space exploration and not actually go into space. That's just toying with expectations. And besides, it's not like this comes out of left field, it was built up to very gradually. And even better, Moonraker is by no means a dull affair. The film still has a load of incredible action pieces, starting with the skydiving sequence, the fight in the glass museum, which actually makes for an interesting setting for a brawl, and let's face it, we all love the sound of glass breaking, and also, ooh, the cable car fight on Sugarloaf Mountain, that is a particular standout when you take into consideration that the stuntman that's hanging off the cable car from the wide shots, yeah, he does not have a safety winch. So there's a lot to enjoy in this movie that still feels like classic 007. In fact, it could be safe to say there may have been too much in it. Call me crazy, but did the gondola chase in Venice really add anything to the mix? I bet even today you can cut that out and lose absolutely nothing. Ah, and the cast is no slouch job either. Michael Lonsdale plays Hugo Drax with a sort of eerie calm. He treats Bond's interference as sort of a minor distraction, and that's the edge that makes this villain work, his obsession with total control. It's not until the end when things start crashing down around him that he becomes totally unhinged. Oh, and speaking of monsters, literally, back by popular demand, it's Jaws, the monolithic silver-grilled assassin who falls in love with an adorable little woman with pigtails. I'm honestly okay with this. I suppose even spiritual cousins to Walter from The Mask have a soft, fluffy side. As for the humorously monikered Holly Goodhead, uh, what is there to say about her? She's an undercover agent. She's capable. Good in a brawl. Has mad tech skills, and yeah, she's oddly a refreshing change of pace for what people were used to in their Bond girls at the time, and Lois Childs does play her with poise and has a playful chemistry with Roger Moore. The con of the character is that while she is capable and serves the plot effectively, she doesn't really have much in the way of depth. Apart from her being an agent, you don't really know much about her, and in lieu of all the time we spend with this character, we never get a chance to connect. Even some of the lesser Bond girls actually gave us an opportunity to know them on a personal level. Holly Goodhead is basically Jinx, if the writers actually wanted to put some effort to make her less of a cartoon character. Though, despite my statements, this is a minor nitpick. A major nitpick I have about this movie is that plot-wise, it is the exact same story as The Spy Who Loved Me. Let's go down the list. It starts with a parachute scene. The villain feels society is sick and decides to create a new utopia in an uncharted frontier and use a doomsday weapon to destroy humanity and wipe the slate clean. The Bond girl is an agent from another country and, well, Jaws! Moonraker is essentially the 007 equivalent to the Doctor Who episode Silver Nemesis. And like Silver Nemesis, it's very entertaining. But why watch that when it was done better in one film prior? 